Whereas the first chapter dealt with topics that were general in nature, but the kind of things that we will need for organic chemistry, it's chapter two here when we really start focusing on organic chemistry itself. And our starting point is the class of compounds considered to be the simplest in the world of organic chemistry. They are a type of hydrocarbon called alkanes. Hydrocarbons only contain carbon and hydrogen, and of compounds like that, alkanes are the starting point. And so a lot of this chapter deals with being able to represent these alkanes uh, using different structural formulas and also being able to put names with them because there is a uh, special naming system in organic chemistry and we're going to start learning some of the rules in chapter two and we'll use them throughout the course. This barrel is here on this slide because the source of hydrocarbons in general are fossil fuels but for organic chemists instead of just burning them for energy they use them to create all kinds of different materials from plastics to pharmaceuticals and um, they are considered to be the starting point for a, a wide variety of, of materials made in, in organic chemistry and so we want to get familiar with a few of those there are these three different types of hydrocarbons alkanes that's the focus of chapter two and as we'll see just like the word alkane ends in a and e particular examples of alkanes have that suffix in their name that's coming up later as it says here alkanes are identified by having only single bonds between the carbons later in chapters five and six we'll deal with alkenes with the e and e suffix and as it says here, their distinguishing characteristic is the double bond between carbons. Alkynes, that's how you pronounce that last one, those are dealt with uh, a good bit in chapter 9. We won't get to that chapter in this course. If you are around for chemistry 212, that's when we talk about alkynes in great depth. But all of those are mentioned in chapter 2, and they can be distinguished by the difference in those suffixes and in terms of their structures the difference between a single bond double bond or triple bond but as I say we're mostly dealing with the single bonds uh, those types of hydrocarbons in this chapter and you'll need to be familiar with the names of the first ten of those because they form the basis of all the other names that we're going to see and here's the first four of those methane is the simplest organic compound is the simplest hydrocarbon and it's only got the one carbon uh, ethane is the two carbon alkane propane is for three carbons butane for four uh, the molecular formulas here in the sec uh, second column don't tell you much about how things are connected structural formulas are more informative and so we're going to be using structural formulas pretty much the whole semester uh, these formulas in the third column illustrate that each carbon is bonded to just the number of hydrogens it needs to satisfy that octet rule that we saw in the last chapter. So uh, these structural formulas can sometimes show every one of those bonds to every carbon to really give the detail of what is connected to what. Um, more often we're going to use these condensed structural formulas where it's assumed that the carbons are all connected one after the other and after each carbon it indicates how many hydrogens it has and it will have the special number of hydrogens needed to give each carbon exactly four bonds uh, all alkanes follow that rule so these names on the left um, in the meth, the eth, pro, bute, the first part of the names are associated with how many carbons the A and E tells us that all the carbons are only making single bonds and uh, in the next little video, we'll meet some more members of the alkane family.